Hello, I'm Rich Schaefermeyer, Springfield Township resident, and uh, one of my artist uh, passions is enameling, and I'm here today to uh, demonstrate how to actually do enameling and show some examples of the various types of uh, materials you can use and uh, types of uh, artwork you can make. So to start with, uh, I'm going to show a few things that I've made, starting with uh, this bowl. This is the very first object I made. Uh, it's, uh, I took a class at Middletown Art Center and learned the basics of enameling. Like it enough, I've set up my own studio in my basement. Uh, there's a lot of different shaped vessels you can buy. Uh, here's another one that shows some different techniques. Uh, these little floral wafers uh, melt and form flowers. And the reverse side has this nice gold looking uh, color to it. Uh, so as I said, there's lots of these shapes that you can buy. <coughs> you can also just start with various metals uh, that you can purchase like this sunburst. maple leaf, various butterflies, and you can also, if you want, uh, with the right type of copper, you can just cut out your own shape and go from there. I'll show some examples of where I got a little spend time doing it completely, but uh, you can see it's very easy to cut this gauge of copper. Uh, some of the other uh, ones I've made is, uh, you know, kind of an abstract pattern. And uh, another one with a technique called scribefito landscape. Now some of the examples I'll show <coughs> have some freehand artwork done with them, but you don't actually have to be a good freehand artist to make really nice looking enameled objects because there's a lot of techniques that uh, <coughs> you know, don't rely on that. I'm going to show you a couple today. Uh, I had a friend who wanted me to make a pendant of a snake, and so I made a number of them and let her choose. Then I did the same thing with uh, a seahorse. And that's what's nice about this uh, copper I showed earlier that you can cut because you can cut it into various shapes and uh, go from there. Uh, this is an example of a stencil. Uh, so as I mentioned, <coughs> there's all sorts of stencils available uh, in the marketplace. So uh, if you don't have the ability to draw, you can use stencils, you can layer them, uh, there's many techniques you can use with stencils. Uh, enamels are used a lot by jewelers, and these are a couple little earrings that have those floral wafers. And again, it's an example where uh, you select your colors, you uh, put some decorative uh, things on top of it, and you get a nice looking uh, result. This uses what's called separation enamel, and so this is a cutout shape, and it's embossed with, you know, leaf pattern, and the it, separation enamel causes uh, four different layers to spread out and give you different color. You can also fold copper. Uh, this is another cutout shape, and uh, get. This is a pendant that you can make uh, just by folding and unfolding copper. Uh, there's various ways of drawing on uh, the top of the enamel. This uses what's called overglaze. Uh, you can use rubber stamps. Now these are just children rubber stamps we had from when my kids were young. And this actually has two stamps to show that you can have different layers. Uh, <clears throat> enamels come in uh, two forms. There's transparent enamels, which you can see through. They're particularly good on silver and gold. Uh, 
but you can also use them on copper if you use the right technique. Uh, and this has transparent enamel on the base and then it has opaque enamels on the top. So you get a bit of a 3D effect if, if you're looking, because you're looking down through the glass. Uh, another technique that's used is called poisoné, uh, which uses little flat wires that you shape uh, and then you fill in between the wires with enamel. Uh, this has opaque white with transparent uh, blues and there's some shading uh, that you can get when you use transparent colors. And I have another poison A which uses opaque enamels and it uh, is similar. The, the wires kind of form the shape and hold the enamels in place. You can also freehand now this is all just sifted on. I'll be showing sifting here in a few minutes. An example of a pre-handed tree. Uh, my wife wanted a, a phone holder and she saw one on TV and I said, oh, I can make that. So she can sit there and watch videos. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's just that same easy to cut copper folded and then enameled. There are painting enamels, so you can uh, uh, paint landscapes or other objects. There's a whole class of uh, enamels from the medieval times that are uh, portraits that are done in enamel. And then finally, the area that uh, I kind of have been specializing in is uh, sculptural assemblages. Um, so this is one example I will have in the uh, Arts Local show. And then the most recent one I've done uh, is a little blue heron. And so I've made a number of these. And, and these are all assembled from that same cop cop copper I cut out in enamel. So that's just a, a brief example of uh, what you can do with enameling, some of the things you can make. As I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of jewelers who uh, uh, use enameling. Uh, I'm going to be showing the process and the firing. I have a kiln. Uh, but you can also do what's called torch enameling uh, with a butane torch you can buy from a hardware store and uh, uh, so especially works on these smaller objects that uh, a jeweler or someone else might make. So one of the major techniques uh, is just sifting enamel on. So this is uh, ground glass. Uh, these are, I use all lead free enamels and I usually put these on a little just a, not as a stand and to add the enamel you just and what I'm doing now is called counter enamel where it's on the back side of the uh, final piece I just went and grabbed a toothpick real quick because there's a little tiny hole in here and I just want to make sure that that's clear of enamel. So that's ready to fire. It's got a coat of powdered glass on it and I'm going to put it in the kiln and I'll show you how that works here right now. Uh, this is a firing screen and a trivet. Uh, because this is only coated with glass on one side, I can just put it on there directly. And then this is a firing fork, which I'm going to use to put in the kiln. The kiln is set at 1450 Fahrenheit. Uh, so there are some safety precautions you have to take when you're doing enameling. And one of them is, uh, if you do a lot of enameling, you like to protect your eyes uh, with a pair of green goggles. 
And then I have a timer set for two minutes. I'm going to pick this up, open the film. Set the timer. And we'll wait and see what comes out. Okay, we're going to pull it out of the kill now. And it is hot. <clears throat> and it needs to cool for a sharp period of time, and then I'll uh, show you the result. So this is the result. You can maybe see the black and shiny. And one thing that happens to uh, uh, copper in the kiln is it gets this black oxide or red oxide. And we're going to have to clean that off. So a lot of enameling is two minutes of firing and then several minutes of cleaning. And there's multiple ways to clean. Uh, I'm going to use a product called Penny Bright at the sink that just wipes that and makes it nice and shiny. Uh, if it's burnt in further, uh, this is a solution of uh, vinegar and salt. And that blue color is uh, copper salts that have uh, been leached off the surface. And so this also cleans them up quite nicely. But for something this size and with that little bit of oxide, I'm just going to uh, use Penny Bright and quickly clean that up. Uh, to clean it, we, we're going to put what's called Penny Bright. It's citric acid and pumice, and it cleans off all the copper oxide. And then on the edges, we take what's called a lumdum stone and just lightly scrape it. And you want to do that because otherwise this black oxide will get in the enamel. And if you have like white, you'll have little black specks everywhere. Uh, we got the back covered. And we have the front cleaned. And now I'm going to put a lemon yellow on. And again, just powdered glass. There's about 169 different uh, opaque and transparent colors in this collection. Uh, they're uh, called Thompson enamels. They're actually the plant is located in Bellevue, Kentucky, right across the river. And it's the uh, only enamel manufacturer in the Western Hemisphere. And we're going to sprinkle this on. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of glass being used. So these small sample or small one ounce jars go a long way. And that's ready for the kiln. So uh, this time, because we have enamel on the back, uh, we need to uh, put it on what's called a trivet, which uh, holds the edges of the copper. So it just sits there like that. And I have a number of trivets of different shapes and sizes to accommodate uh, what I make. So we're going to put this in the kiln for, again, about two minutes. So this is the black that we put on first. It's called the counter enamel. And then we have a lemon yellow on the front. And because blue goes well with yellow, I'm going to put a design on there uh, with blue. It's called uh, wedged blue. And I've already cleaned the edges with the stone. So I'm going to use just a kid's template, uh, have a little snowflake pattern that is the size to fit this one inch disc. And I'm going to put that down there. And then, as before, I'm going to sprinkle some enamel on there. And then carefully lift this up and move it away. And there's a little bit of stray parts, so I'm going to just take a paintbrush and clean that up a little bit.
ready to fire it again. So this is the result of the stencil we used. And again, there's all sorts of stencils that can be used and designs and you can layer them. And while I was off camera, I went ahead and prepared a second piece. So this is a little starburst pattern that you can purchase. And I have just white on the back side and a light blue on the front side. And what I'm going to do is use a, a stamp of a fish. And again, this is a technique where you don't have to have any uh, freehand artist skills to be able to do. And so uh, what we do is we don't actually stamp the glass on with the stamp. We stamp a holding liquid. So it's called clear fire. And I'm not showing it today, but... Uh, a lot of times uh, you need a holding agent to keep the glass either on the edges or if it's a bowl shape to hold it up vertically. And uh, this is a mixture of water and clear fire. It's a gum solution. You just spray that on the piece, put on the glass, spray it again, maybe do that a couple times, and then you dry it on top of the kiln for five or ten minutes, and then that sets the enamel in place so that when you fire it, it stays where you want it to stay. What I'm going to use here is just a little bit of clear fire. All I need is a drop. And I'm going to use my finger to spread that out just a little bit. And then we're going to take the stamp. Put the stamp on top and press down once and pick up. And you won't be able to see it, but there's a layer of the clear fire on there. And because that uh, holding agent isn't super strong, we're going to use a different way of adding sifting on the enamel. I have this flame orange. And this time I'm going to put a face mask on because this is a color, none of these have lead, but uh, this one has cadmium, just like cadmium paints, and so you don't want to breathe that. And this is a 200 mesh screen, so these enamels are called 80 mesh enamels. They go through the screen with holes 80 mesh size. This, which I used earlier, is a 40 mesh screen, which allows that 80 mesh enamel to go through. But the range in size is quite large. And so this is a 200 mesh, which is much finer particle. Oop. It would help if I take the bottom off. And then we're going to pick that piece up. Okay, I didn't get enough clear fire on that, so we're just going to do that again. There we go, I think that's better. And we're putting a much finer dusting on there. As you can see, the, the coarser granules are still contained in the uh, sift. Now when we can pick this up. Now you can see the pattern on the fish now.
Got it? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you need to just clean it up slightly. So I'm putting a little decorative touch to this. Uh, use some clear fire and just brushed it on and then sifted on this sea green enamel to give seaweeds in behind the fish. Now I'm going to go fire that. And here's the uh, final result after it was fired. So today we covered a couple different techniques, uh, one with a stencil and one with a stamp. So I showed you in some of the early examples, there's lots of different things you can do with enameling. And if, if you're ever interested, uh, feel free to give me a call or email me and I'll uh, tell you more about how you can learn yourself.